Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you are new here or you've been sitting in the shadows, come on forward and hit that subscribe button and join us. Make sure to also set your notification bell to all. That way you won't miss any videos that I upload, which tend to be daily. If you are interested in becoming a member of Back to Ashes or would like to buy me a coffee as a special thank you, that information can be found in the description below. Now, with all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, take back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Ouija Stories. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. Warning, some of these stories may contain material not suitable for all. Listener discretion is highly advised. Also, there may be strong adult language. So, if that's right up your alley, let's get started. Back in college, I invited my friends Ryan and Cooper over to my dorm for a night of board games. After a few rounds, we decided to spice things up a bit by playing with the Ouija board. It was around 2 a.m. and we were in my room upstairs. For some reason, our college had multiple basements and we thought nothing of it as we set the scene with the lights on. We began by asking, are there any spirits in this room? To our surprise, the planchette moved straight to yes, twice, as if it was confirming its presence empathetically. At first, we shrugged it off, treating it like a silly game. We asked the spirit its name, and it spelled out, Susie. We chuckled, thinking it was a pretty mundane name for a ghost. Curiosity got the better of us, so we asked, How did you die? The planchette moved spelling out in the basement confused cooper asked which basement since our school had several the board responded with number three we realized we were in basement number two and a chill ran right down our spines we started to feel uneasy but pressed on how did you die we asked again the planchette spelled out, from a sword. This puzzled us even more. The school was built in 1945, the same year World War II ended. Why would there be a sword involved? Despite our growing fear, we decided to check out basement number three. As we cautiously entered, our flashlights flickered over something metallic. There, against the wall, was a sword. What? It wasn't just lying there. It was hovering, as if pinning an impossible figure against the wall. The air around it felt heavy and charged. Suddenly, it hit us. Susie was still here, her spirit trapped. Panic set in, and we bolted back to our room, our hearts pounding. Once we were safely inside, I blurted out, Can we end this game? The planchette moved to yes. We never touched the Ouija board again. The memory of that night lingered, a chilling reminder of the unseen and unknown. Hello, everyone. Has someone ever had experience with something that's trapped inside a Ouija board? I won't say it's necessarily evil, but it's something that enjoys scaring the shit out of you, making it known it's there. This is a long text, but if you are interested in those kinds of things, you won't regret it. English isn't my first language, but I think you will get the point of what I'm talking about. Anyways, here it goes. I used this kind of tool since I was 12 years old. I don't play often. I don't ask about death, and I'm very careful to follow the rules. And I'm also careful as to whom I invite in using the Ouija board with me. 
as I don't want anyone making jokes or saying anything that might anger the spirit or the like. I borrowed my friend's Ouija board a while back, and we played a few times without problem. A few months later, I played with it with my boyfriend and another friend, and I had a feeling that something else was talking to us. It made jokes and used words like LOL and ha ha, like everything is funny, and it says things that makes no sense. And when it said its name, it made no sense at all, and I repeated it out loud as if it was correct, and I got a ha ha as an answer. I don't exactly remember the name, but after that session, I called my friend, who's the owner of the board, because I remember her telling me something weird. Something happened to her and her friends once. Let me add that I have cleansed this board three times with white sage, another time with crystals and salt, and a third time with all of the things listed above. I asked her about it, and she described a spirit or something similar to the one I was talking about. It used a different name, not exactly the same. She came over the same night, and I made the decision to cover our faces without protecting ruins. I had a feeling this thing wanted to do more than just talk. During our session, it asked us to let it out. It said it wanted to play with us here, and we said politely that we would think about it. We didn't want to anger it, but I think we did by not saying yes. After that, it tried to throw us off the board. I have never felt such coldness around my hands or felt such force as we were spinning around in circles. I was not really scared, I just felt a discomfort and... I put all of my feelings aside as to not feed it to this thing. I wouldn't say it's a spirit. I think it's some kind of trickster. We struggled to say goodbye to this being as it didn't want us to leave, but after trying to end the session for the third time, we managed to properly end it, period. After this session, it lay in its original packaging and I had no disturbance in my apartment whatsoever. Eight months later, and the board was borrowed by a friend of ours, and I told her that they might want to cleanse it before use, and I told them that I suspect something is stuck inside the board, and that they should be careful. Our friend called me and said that they cleansed the board in the sun by my suggestion, and when they were going to start a session, before they could even put their fingers down on the board, it started to crack in one corner. Only in the color, so not through the board itself, which is a good thing, I'm guessing. They said some weird energy was coming through, where both of them were feeling dizzy and got a headache and had to lay down, and they couldn't really get a clear answer, so they ended the session. The last time someone used the board was two to three weeks ago. It's at my friend's apartment, and let me tell you the things that has happened there. It started with hearing steps in our hallway, but there was nothing there. And then the Wi-Fi got cut off randomly, but she didn't think much of it. Then the TV started changing channels randomly, and her lamps started blinking rapidly. She actually called me yesterday when the lamps were blinking like Christmas bulbs in her home. Things on the table are being pushed down to the floor. She can't sleep with her bedroom door open since she has seen a shadow standing there watching her. And the most creepiest thing of all, according to me, is that she had an old music box that she's had since she was a little kid. If you pull the string on it, music is meant to play. The only thing is that it hasn't worked in 10 years, and all of a sudden, she can hear it playing in the bottom of a box in her home. Not just one time, but three times it played. I sent a picture to a friend of mine who can sense things, spirits and such, by just looking and sensing, and I didn't give her any information, but 
She described exactly what happened in the apartment and described a shadow figure standing in the doorway, staring at her. The shadow figure had a crooked back and she usually is able to see hair color and such. If she could concentrate, but she could just see a shadow of a person, nothing else. How do we correctly get rid of this board? I had read multiple ways of getting rid of this thing, but I wonder if anyone's had a similar experience. And what did you do to stop the haunting? I don't think this thing is necessarily evil, but it's not something good either. To burn the board is a no-no. Where do I put the board away safely so that it doesn't bother us anymore? I'm sorry for the rambling, but I had to describe it as best that I possibly could. If you have any suggestions, I'm open. I have been wrestling with the idea of submitting this. A, because it is something that I still feel so scared about. And B, because I am very new to writing stories. After reading some of the other stories, I feel compelled to share mine. It is a little long, but every time I tell this story, the person I'm telling it to, and myself, get chills. When I was younger, I went through a phase of being very into Ouija boards. I was always fascinated by the supernatural and was quite frankly disappointed that nothing had ever happened to me. That changed during a sleepover that I attended in third grade. Myself, along with five or so other girls from my class, were staying the night at the house of another classmate of ours. Nothing of significance happened until late after her parents had gone to bed. We had played light as a feather, stiff as a board, and bloody Mary to no avail. So we had essentially given up on our mission to make contact with the beyond until one of the girls, who was my best friend at the time, smiled and pulled something out of her bag. It was a Ouija board. The host of the sleepover was instantly really upset and demanded that it be taken out of her house. We asked her why she was so mad about it, but she didn't really have a reason. She just insisted that we put it away or else her mom would freak out. Her mom was really religious, so we just assured her that it was a superstitious thing. The girl whose board it was would not accept that as a valid reason to stop, so we started to play. No one except me, the girl who the board belonged to, and the sleepover host really believed. We had asked several questions, and while the pointer did move, they attributed it to me or my best friend moving it. They say that the pointer moves because someone playing is subconsciously moving it. That could have been true, so we decided to ask a question that I knew for sure I only knew the answer to. I intentionally did not put my hand on the piece to try and prove a point and the piece started moving immediately. It had spelled three, correct by the way, letters when my friend's mom came into the room. I will never forget the expression on her face. It was one of pure terror and absolute disgust. I went to school with this girl and was one of her best friends from ages five to 13. I knew her mother very well, and never before then, or since then, have I seen her so profoundly upset. She was so livid that she actually called everyone's parents at 2 a.m., insisting that they come pick us up. Ouija boards usually have some sort of sun or moon or some other contradicting nature-type things in the top corners. The one we played with had an open eye in the left upper corner and a closed eye in the right. When we went back to pack up our stuff, we noticed that it had moved from the letter we had left it on, and it was solidly over the open eye. 
my friend and I looked at each other and decided it would be best not to share that with anyone else, so as to not cause unnecessary panic. When school started on the next Monday, we all ran up to the host asking what the hell had happened and why her mom was so upset. She was visibly shaken and did not want to talk about it. After being godded all day by everyone who had attended the sleepover, she finally cracked. The story went that her mom was in high school. She had this group of friends that she hung around with pretty much constantly. Two members of the group were dating. One day, when they were juniors, they decided to play with the Ouija board. They also decided to ask the one question that you are not supposed to ask. When am I going to die? One by one, they each took turns asking this, and the board gave them all answers. Curiously, the couple both got the same date. For a while, everyone kept the dates in the back of their minds, but as the years went on with no deaths, they lost their impact. The couple stayed together throughout college, and one weekend, the boyfriend took his girlfriend on a trip with the intention of proposing to her. They were both murdered. A murder that has gone unsolved. On the day that the board had predicted that they would both die on. Now, I have no way of verifying the authenticity of her story, but based on both the reaction of my friend's mom and the manner with which my friend retold us the story, I have no doubts in my mind that it is true. Now, it has been 15 years since this happened, and nothing has happened in regards to the board resting on the open eye. But I refuse to participate in Ouija boards, and I strongly urge anyone who expresses interest not to as well. An experience with the Ouija board, which, despite being very skeptical, I can't fully explain away. I'm sorry for the long story, but here it goes. Years ago, myself, my best friend, another friend, and three girls were at one of the girls' houses for Halloween. We were just going to spend the afternoon or evening chilling and watching horror movies. Anyway... During the afternoon, the girl whose house it was says she has a Ouija board and that we should play it. All three girls really got excited to do it. Best friend kind of superstitious and very reluctant. Myself and other friends kind of skeptical too and indifferent to doing it but deemed it pointless. Even more so when she brought it out and it was some shitty things she'd made herself with a piece of old wood and a marker pen and one of her dad's whiskey glasses as a planchette. But we were horny teenagers and the girls had boobs, so inevitably they got their way. Superstitious friend still wants no part, and the other five of us start playing. The grimy predictable happens, and it starts spelling things like show boobs, almost as if one of the guys was forcing the glass when we had our fingers on it. Me and another guy found this hilarious. Girls just got annoyed. We weren't taking it seriously. So we all agreed to do it properly. After a bit of random twitching, it starts going. Five, no, six, yes, repeatedly. We took this to mean it wanted the guy who wasn't joining in to join. Note, everyone said it was the time and afterwards that they weren't forcing it now. The rational part of me assumes they were, but I'm not sure. After much persuasion, the third guy joins us. Again, there is a period of a few random letters or twitching, but nothing coherent. Then... It starts repeating a sequence of three letters and some numbers over and over again. Suddenly, the guy that joined last jumps back. 
Out of instinct, we all do the same. The glass falls over and is all steamed up with a cross scratched on the inside. The girls kind of freaked out. I explained the glass obviously steamed up because we just spent however long with six sweaty teenage hands on a cold upturned glass. It's called condensation and is far from supernatural. The cross was probably a pre-existing flaw in the glass. Dishwasher scratches or something that we didn't notice before but became more apparent when the glass had steamed up. Note, I'm still convinced I was right in this fact and it is unrelated to my spookiness, but adding it in for completeness of the story. Anyway, Guy 3 is now very quiet, definitely not playing again, so we stick a movie on instead. Shortly after, he goes home, clearly not his usual self. The next day, he calls me and asks if I'll go somewhere with him. We get a train a few towns over, and he explained on the way. I knew prior to any of this, his dad had ran out on him and his mom when he was a baby, and he had no contact with that side of the family, knowing only who they were from photo albums. On the journey, he fills in the gaps. His surname is obviously his dad's. His parents were married, now divorced. He never changed it to his mom's. His middle name was a family tradition on his dad's side, and he had an uncle who died in a motorcycle crash a few weeks before he was born. He knew nothing but his first name and about the accident from going through the photos with his mom. Oh, that's your uncle whatever. He died just before you were born, or whatever was said. Anyway, the three letters were his uncle's initials. It took him a while of them repeating for it to click, but obviously, at some point, the sequence containing two of his three initials registered. Then it hit him. The third one was his uncle's first name, initial. He'd ask his mom about when he got home, but she had little to add. He didn't already know. And we were now on the train on our way to the cemetery his uncle was buried in so he could see if maybe he could make any sense of the numbers. His mom knew of the cemetery from the funeral, but since the divorce hadn't been there, he had been there before. At this point, the steam and the cross, the bits everyone else found spookiest, I was sure, were as per my explanation and maintain this stance to this day, despite the next bit. I was now thinking maybe everyone else was in on it, Maybe he'd been more curious about his dad's side of the family now that he was older. Had visited the grave recently and they had all conspired to try and scare me. One of, if not all the others, forcing the five no, six yes bit. Him reluctantly joining in. The steam and cross still, as per my explanation, and just a fortunate coincidence. And now we were on our way to some pre-planned big reveal at the graveyard, which would, in their plan, scare my pants off. So, we got to the graveyard, wander around for ages trying to find the grave. Eventually, we found it, and the mysterious string of numbers that followed the three letters were the chapters and verse of two biblical inscriptions on the two stones. I have to admit that were I not already onto their little scheme that would have been pretty clever, I turned to my friend to high-five him and compliment him on what would have been a very clever ruse had I not figured it out. To see him just sitting on the grass, staring at the grave, then started sobbing. Literally just sat there with tears streaming down his cheeks. Now... This guy can lie, and he can prank, and my rationalism of everything anyone claims to be supernatural would make me the gold standard target for a spooky Halloween prank. But he cannot act. He was obviously and genuinely fucking sad. I just went and sat by him. We sat there for ages. Then, 
just went on home in pretty much silence. This was the mid-90s. He's still my best friend. Randomly, over the years, I've pestered him to do another Ouija board with me, as I'm curious now, and he is the only one I've had anything vaguely resembling a result from. He always declines. He won't talk about what happened, not as in silence treatment, but just changes the subject. However, not long after the event, he did start to track down the side of his family and has reconciled with his father, met his half-brothers, etc. Before we get started, I would like to say I am very spiritual. I was around eight to nine years old. My biological mother, whom I no longer live with, was into witchcraft. She had Ouija boards as well as many other things like basil and rosemary, you know, stuff like that. However, the Ouija board is the main object in this story. We had a family friend who came over a lot. My parents had a few drinks with him as well as played a few games, but then my parents told me and my two sisters to go to bed, as if they were going to watch a scary movie or something. However, it was much, much worse. We were all in bed sleeping. I had woken up and I was thirsty. However, I knew my parents wouldn't have been happy about me being up so late, so I snuck through the hallway then stopped at the turning point of the hallway, and I saw my parents as well as their friends sitting all around the coffee table. My mother, at the time, had a very unsettling look on her face, as well as my dad. However, their friend had an excited look on his face, like he had just gotten some great news. I never realized what they were doing until I got older and realized they were playing with a Ouija board. I hadn't known anything about the paranormal at that time because I was too young. I never realized why I had been seeing the things I had, but now I do. After that experience, I had started seeing a very tall, very dark, no coloration other than black shadow coming to me at night. Now that I think about it, probably around the same time as that night, every night, as I got older, I've stopped seeing things, but not other things. I am now quite a few years older and haven't had an experience with the Shadow Man again. However, my mind is way more open, and I see and feel things that I don't think everyone else sees or feels. A newer story is me and my dad, as well as my sisters and my new mom, had moved into a four-bedroom trailer. At first, I was still pretty young, but old enough to know about the paranormal. This was around the end of 2023, and I had closed my eyes and kind of meditated. I had what was like a vision of an older woman with blondish hair, a light whitish robe, and she had a cigarette in her hand, and she was sitting in her chair in the living room, the living room in our house but it was like a really dark and foggy feeling. She had a white, small poodle type of dog. She was just stilling there, and then I had opened my eyes. It was weird, but I had things like that happen before, not so clear as that one, but I would have a dream or vision of a moment, and then a few days or weeks later, it would happen again. But that's not all. There have been many unexplainable events in our house, some of which my parents had witnessed with me and many by themselves. One occasion was when I was home alone and I was just watching TV. It was around mid-noon day, I'd say, and I got up to use the restroom. I was about halfway in the doorway when the door slowly creaked closer to me as if someone was slowly shutting it. This other occasion happened in front of my mom and father as well. We were sitting in the kitchen. My mother and father were talking about the security camera we had just installed outside. 
when I heard what sounded like a radio sound go off. At first, it was quiet. Then it started blaring channels so loud it sounded like a spirit box. That was when my mother noticed, and then my father as well. And so, we made our way to their bedroom, which is where it sounded like the noise had come from. However, the sound stopped as soon as we all jumped up to make our way over there. Not only that my parents never had an old radio, which is what the sound had sounded like. A couple of days later, my elder sister's sound system set off an alarm. However, the reason I said it like that is my sister had been gone to work since about 6 in the morning, so it was strange. But of course, not the strangest thing we've encountered. On another occasion, a black cat and a crow was found dead by me and my little sister. And then a few days later, my black cat Moon passed away. So if anyone knows anything about these signs, please let me know what you think. My stepmom says we're cursed, and I'm not so far strung from that idea either. It's been a few weeks later, and so far, nothing has happened as of yet. Okay, so before I begin, I'd like to explain that this story I'm going to read to you is quite controversial. I've commented on other people's posts under the paranormal about this experience. Some people believe me and some didn't. I don't ask that you do believe me and just tell the story to mainly make people aware that Ouija boards should be taken very seriously, making sure you look up proper procedures and how to use it before playing around with one. So, I'd like to begin that this story I've tried to forget and I cannot remember every single detail. I can't remember every one of the questions we asked and the answers we received. I can remember a few, but I 100% remember what happened to me. And this story is my brother Nick, my sister-in-law Brittany, her friend Ashley, and my girlfriend at the time, Katie. And with that, let's begin. I'm going to take you back to the summer of 2010 again. This year, I had a rush of getting into the paranormal. The fact that ghosts and demons are real fascinated me and would make my adrenaline pump when I would encounter such things. Well, this particular night, my sister-in-law had asked me if I had ever taken part in a Ouija board, and at the time, I had no clue what that even was. So, she knew obviously I never had. So, she began explaining what Ouija boards are and how they work and such. Then, she asked me if I would like to experience it for myself. Of course, just at the thought, my heart skipped a beat. So, we decided that we would do it and had to find a place to do it. Her parents wouldn't let us do it in their house. My brother and her were dating at the time let alone even around their house. So, me and my brother decided, fuck it. I know mom and dad won't let us do it inside, but outside on the porch or in the garage shouldn't be a big deal, right? So, we go down to my parents' house, and we start setting up shop on my back porch. Got a candle, matches, pen, and paper. Grab some chairs around the table and set ourselves around it. Just as we were starting, my heart started pumping so fast and hard because I was really nervous. And was this really going to work, I wondered. So we all put our hands over the Ouija board and Brittany had one hand over it so she could write with the other hand and she started by asking if there are any friendly spirits around us that would like to communicate. The Ouija board moved to no, and I started freaking out. I'm barely touching this fucking thing. I mean, my fingers are pretty much hovering over it with a paper-thin gap away from the planchette. Triangular-shaped pieces, usually with a small glass in the center, used to cast over letters and such to communicate with us. 
I asked if anybody was moving it and told them to stop fucking with me. I ain't got time for this bullshit. And everyone was saying that we're not playing around with you. We want this to work just as much as you do. And Brittany asked Nick to be serious. Are you playing around? And to stop it if he was. So he said he wasn't. He wanted it to work too. So then Brittany's voice became firm and she stated that only benevolent entities are welcomed here and any violent entities were not welcome to speak with us and that they go ahead and leave or we'll just end the session. So we wait a few minutes, all place our hands over the planchette again and Brittany states again, are there any spirits here with us tonight that would like to communicate with us? The planchette slowly moved to yes. So sure, maybe an entity was lying to us, who knows, right? But we decide to keep going, trying to communicate with the spirit. Brittany asks, is there anybody in particular here that you would like to speak with? The board this time, pretty swiftly, moved to yes and back to the center. Now, usually you are the one that would push the planchette back to the corner, but this spirit just seemed to guide it the whole time we were communicating with it. Brittany begins to ask it, who would it like to communicate with first? The board slowly spelt out Ashley's name. Now, Ashley began getting nervous, asking, why me? Why does it want to start with me? She seemed to be getting nervous and shit. I would too, if it had specified wanting to communicate with me first. So, Brittany tells Ashley to ask it something that the spirit could be a relative and such could possibly be a demon lying, asking a question that only you would know the answer to. Not something that could be an easy guesser. And Ashley asked what year the spirit had died, if it had even ever lived. I can't remember the year it spilled out, but I do remember her exclaiming that that was the year her mother had died, and she began getting frantic and sad, but she was interested. So, Brittany told her to ask questions only her mother would know. I can't remember all of these, but Ashley asked personal questions only her mom would know. Not even any of us would know and things started to get creepy. So here's Ashley becoming very emotional, believing she is really speaking with her mother at one point. One of us would take our finger off and see if it would go to just three of us, then two of us, and then just Ashley herself. And the planchette would still slightly move around with just Ashley hovering two fingers above the piece. Whoever it was had a strong connection with her, I remember the spirit spelling out how thankful it was Ashley found my sister-in-law that her mother never left her side and was just happy she had a real friend in her life that truly cared for her daughter. After all of this had happened, and I mean we spent a good time going over an hour, probably two hours communicating for Ashley, and Ashley felt she had asked enough we asked that her mother spirit stay with us and ask if there were any other friendly spirits around that would like to communicate with us. And if so, would she watch over us? Well, the board went to yes and no. We asked what it meant and it slowly spelled out evil and good and that there were good fought evil away. We thanked her mother and the other spirits for protecting us and asked her mother if she would communicate for us with the others. The board went to yes. So we all began taking turns. My brother, then Katie, just asking random questions. My brother being stupid and asking how he would die. And I forget what the board said. I think it had said age, assuming it was saying old age. And he said that shit's lame. And the girls all give him shit because I guess you're not supposed to ask questions like that. There's some things you shouldn't ask because you shouldn't know. You should just let them play out. 
Well, it gets to my turn, and I couldn't really think of much. I knew I was thinking around, asking it if I was going to die young like my brother had. Asked just to piss off the girls, but to be honest, when I was younger, I never thought I was going to make it past 18. I just felt like I was here for a good time, not a long time. Still kind of feel that way, but obviously I made it past 18. Well, actually I barely did. Anyway, I asked if my grandfather was okay and if he made it to heaven. I got a yes and a proud response. Then I asked it if I was going to be a successful football player. That year, I had just received offers to go play for the Miami Hurricanes in Ole Mississippi, and I wanted to know if I could go pro. The board said yes. I got excited, but hence, I asked it if I could not, if I would then ask what offer I should take. What would be the best one for me? And it said miss. I got excited because that was the school that I originally wanted to go to. But I also felt like maybe these were easy answers. Maybe it can read what I wanted. And that's how it's answering now. Who knows if we were still communicating with Ashley's mom. So I asked it if I would make it to Old Miss. The board said no. I got hurt. That shit fucked me up. I asked it why. It spelled out slowly. Accident. And I said, what accident? Am I going to get hurt? It said yes. Now everybody was getting nervous, but I was getting pissed. And Brittany reminded me that I was asking questions that you shouldn't ask. But now I was invested. Fuck it. I wanted to know. It slowly spelt out. Car and death. Well, at this point, Brittany had enough. I was asking questions I shouldn't be, so had my brother. She didn't like the feeling she was receiving anymore from the energy in the room, and she decided to begin ending the session. Well, that's just what she did. Well now, we'll shortly just get to why I tell this story to warn people about Ouija's. A year and a half later, so 2011, in my junior year, I got a job at a pizza place delivering pizzas after football season to help my parents out by paying my own cell phone bill, gas and such, and helping them out if they needed it. Well, one night, a night that I to this day cannot even remember. I only remember what I was told. I got into a really bad car accident while at work one night. Apparently, from what an eyewitness had told police, what the doctors and police told me the next morning, when I finally gained consciousness around 7 or 8 a.m., I was coming around a corner on US-1. It's an old highway down here in Florida. With a bit of traffic flowing me on the other end was two cars parked side by side in the median. One of the vehicles, well, the one I hit, was parked in the median, but the majority out on the road of the highway. So, here came me in a bunch of traffic with nowhere to go. I slammed into this lady's back end of her trailblazer at about 75 miles per hour. I don't wear seat belts, so I bounced the fuck around this car, hitting my windshield and blowing out my driver window with my face. And I hit her so hard that our cars bounced apart and my vehicle almost went off the edge into the water. A big river next to the highway. The front end of my vehicle was crushed all the way to my windshield. Nothing left, really. Sorry, I said I'd keep this part short. I got a grade 3 concussion and a contusion on my forehead the size of a cantaloupe. Maybe bigger tore my meniscus, broke my leg and such. I stayed in the ICU for two weeks. Didn't get to go back to school that year. I was on hospital homebound because I got so messed up I could barely walk from torn muscles and fractures in my leg. I was having seizures and doctors were afraid of me 
bumping my head, saying I could easily die, so I stayed in a wheelchair for a few months at home. So yeah, I never got to play football again, lost my scholarships, and couldn't help but think, for the love of fucking God, did this happen to me because I had asked this Ouija board about this, and it had said, this would happen? If I never did ask it, would it have happened anyway? Long story short, don't fuck around with Ouija's, or be extremely careful out there, if you decide to, guys. I have so many stories, I'm not sure where to begin. Let's go with Kurt Cobain. I was 15 years old when I began experimenting with the Ouija board. I didn't really know anything about the dark side of it, as my grandmother played it with me when I was very young. The board my grandmother chose to play with me was supposedly my great-grandmother's, her mother's. I was told later my great-grandmother was very intrigued by the supernatural. Anyway, the board had significance to me due to this and I held it in the highest regard, as it was my only relic from my ancestry. It began innocently enough, and always played with a friend. we joke and play, asking all the mundane questions. After about 20 questions answered correctly, with no way of the other person playing, I was hooked. I had a magnetic connection to the board, to be honest. Never felt a connection like that since, actually. Soon, I found myself drawn to playing it constantly. Once out of school, I wanted to play it. I realized none of my friends were as interested as I was in the thing. So yes, despite the warnings, I played by myself. This would be the beginning of my curse, I do believe. I would play hooky so I could play an entire school day. I couldn't put the planchette down. I spoke to Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, several past classmates, and the most prominent, Kurt Cobain. He died while my obsession was spawning, so naturally, being a fan, I couldn't wait to reach him. I remember trying a few times before it felt authentic, but eventually it was, and no one will ever convince me otherwise. He told me to get the word out about his murder. He told me to somehow get his wife investigated. He was pleading. I would get lost in a trance-like state and realize four or five hours would go by without me ever stopping. He told me some pretty amazing stuff that I can't really remember to this day, but now they were profound enough for me to tell everyone, and I do mean everyone. He told me Courtney killed him and staged his death. I'd go on about what a nasty skank she was and that she needed to be arrested. I still, to this day, do not understand how she got away from it all. It really doesn't make sense. This actually forced me to realize a few things quite early in life. I had a couple of people that said they'd believe me, but no one did. My parents didn't, and it really drove me nuts. I started doing some crazy teenage angst things and morbidly wore a picture of him safety pinned to my clothes daily. Living in my hometown where I went to school, I never knew my actions as a 15-year-old would still be brought up today, but whatever. Point is, things were happening. In the rare event I did want to sleep, I couldn't. I must have gone a month without sleep after his death. I saw things I still cannot explain. It wasn't him that was doing these odd things, though, I could tell. It was something far more sinister. Things would fly off the walls, candles would go out, brand new CDs would skip. I sound so old writing this. I would hear things, see figures standing over me when I would try to sleep. It was pretty traumatic, to say the least. Now Kurt would always have a sunny disposition. The other spirits I spoke to didn't. I think I opened up a whole dimension of demonic beings once I began playing. 
My obsession lasted about a year and a half all the while, the board being my main focus. I remember speaking to Kurt one night before my parents got home about something new in the media about his case. Not sure what it was, but it was prevalent. I was downstairs and saw the same picture of Kurt I always used safety pinned on the TV, scrolling up. My mom and dad saw it. My dad still doesn't talk about it, and my mother still gets freaked out every time she hears his name. Here's the kicker. This TV was not on. It was unplugged. I just calmly walked by it, and my mom stopped me, screamed my name, and asked if I had seen that. I replied yes, and I thought it was just so common at this point. I didn't give it a second glance until she startled me by pointing it out. I have several more chilling stories, but this is instilled in my mind. Kurt never rested about getting his story to be heard and told me unless she left some evidence behind, everyone was just going to close him away. Once dead and gone, I reminded and reassured him this would never happen. I would always seek the truth and continue to make waves and let the proper authorities know so Courtney could face justice. I'm happy to say that over 20 years later, there is evidence of Courtney's intent. I am not entirely sure of the investigation status currently, but know some details recently have been brought to light. Goodbye for now. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true Ouija stories. Before I go any further, I would like to give a very special shout out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. Tina Mead, and Mrs. Innerscare, Sugar Spite, Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Tammy Slayton, Amy Klimko, Chrissy Elias, Anita B., Dova Khaleesi, Ida Smith, Buzz Crispin, Patty's Niece, Denise S., Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, and Sydney Cleveland. Thank each and every one of you for being my pillar of support for Back to Ashes. Without you, I wouldn't have a voice and there would not be a Back to Ashes. The only words I can say humbly are thank you. If you are asleep, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this selection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.